Well, speaking of giving people what they want, the auto industry is sort of playing that same game, right? They have been producing so many electric vehicles, they are just absolutely piling up. Uh, the problem is that no one's lining up to buy them. I'm going to bring in the car coach, uh, Lauren Fix. So, so, Lauren, I know you go around the country. I know you've been in the Midwest lately, California. You talk to the dealers. What are they telling you? Oh, I've got some really good information. I'm actually at a Ford event right now, and I spoke with Ford yesterday, and they claim that they're lowering their prices because they're scaling for demand. They're claiming 150,000 Ford Lightning trucks. Here's the interesting thing. They're not selling that many. Yesterday, there was calling for a 92-day turn. That's how long inventory sits on the lot. Today, we're getting from Cox Automotive. It's 103 days in June, and that's up from the 92 days in Q2. So right now, that, that's a serious issue. And then you go, well, are, who, what are people buying if, if that's the case? Well, if you look at the numbers, about 7.5% of BMW households that bought electric vehicles are now switching to Tesla. You're finding that with Mercedes as well as Lexus. And so dealers are stuck with a high end of like a Mach-E, which is a, a great SUV. It's electric. You're talking about 116 days on the lot, and the low end of that is 23 days for the Chevy Bolt. But they're not making them anymore, and the price is substantially lower. People are starting to wake up to the infrastructure issues, the fact that we cannot go 100% electric. And here in California, we're already told, shut off your lights. You know, raise the temperature of your refrigerator. And by the way, download all your videos in SD because HD takes up too much energy. Wow. Really? We're going to go back to candles and dial phones next. Hey, listen, we're going back to <laughs> we're going back to the sun and the wind, right? Those are the original sources of energy. You might, yeah. uh, might as well take the entire lifestyle with it. Uh, you know, I was reading about the Genesis. They have some sort of a uh, $85,000 EV. I think they sold two last month, but that's Genesis. So, so then... Right. These, but they just they just came up with it. That's a brand new lineup. So yeah. that's not really a fair assessment. Okay. But those have been selling for a while. That's where you see the real numbers. Right. You know, what's interesting to me, though, Lauren, is that, uh, you, listen, you got the federal government uh, essentially saying that they're going to outlaw combustion engines at some point between them and a few big states. Because we saw what California mm -hmm. did with CAFE standards. Once they went a certain way, even, mm -hmm. even these automakers who pushed back had no choice because the market is too large. If you're an automaker, it sounds great. It sounds like, you know what, if we could replace every single car or truck in this country, that's a lot of money. So I feel like they're playing along with it, but it feels like at the same time they're playing a dangerous game because these stocks don't look that great. You are 100% correct. Remember that you can have billions of dollars in fines if you don't comply. So every brand has complied because they started with the carbon credits and they only did well for Tesla because he sold them. And now we're saying, well, we'll have millions of dollars in losses. And now they have to lower the prices to incentivize people to buy these vehicles, plus the $7,500 tax credit and your state credit. You could be saving, you know, $19,000, $20,000 off a car. But how will this disaster play out? I've been calling this for a yeah. long time. And yeah. I've taken a ton of heat from manufacturers and other media, but I will tell you, start looking at the real numbers and you'll see these EV mandates are the only way they're gonna have to keep incentivizing to get people to buy them. Car manufacturers are producing great cars. It's not the car manufacturer's fault. They're making fabulous product across the board. There's nothing EV that we've all gone, oh, that's terrible. All cool, all high tech. Problem is consumers are waking up to this doesn't work. Charging stations aren't working. Now that we have access to Tesla chargers, people are thinking, oh, well, this is great. Yeah, well, you're getting low level too. And that's what they have in Europe. And no one talks about that. Mm. I mean, you're, you're looking at the bigger picture with the economy and you fold that in with jobs and, and the possibilities of what might happen, plus insurance rates going higher for literally everyone. And it's just going to cost you more. And hey, we have inflation. Let's just face it. We're in right. a recession. And this is affecting everybody, including when you go to try and get a car loan. Yeah, I, yeah, we, and we've seen car loan rejections uh, a spike to a level that we hadn't seen in a long time. People are smart. People yes. really are smart. They're not being lured yes. into this trap. Lauren, thank you so much for always yeah. being able to break it down to us. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.